and welcome back and today we are looking at the Plex performance on the brand new RS1221 Plus from Synology using that Ryzen based processor. This is another system from Synology designed for SMB and generally not something people are going to use for Plex Media Server but we're going to run our same test that we've always ran on this system in order to see how well it performs in Plex. Let's get the first one up and running. This is our 720p file as always we're using uh, Matrix. Um, and we're going to flick through that file, 720p, nice and straightforward. We're going to do a little bit more of an express one today uh, because this is more of a light test. So we're flicking back and forth. So next, now we know it's going to play 720p, we can go ahead and see what the conversions are going to be like as we move this file between different um, compressions there and different transcoding. So we flick to a 480p file and at 480p, again, running absolutely fine there, flicking back and forth. I think it's going to be absolutely fine. I think it's when we start looking at the smaller compressions where we're going to see this Ryzen non-graphically embedded processor start to really struggle a little bit. So let's go down now. So we're going to a file type here. Let's click it. We're going to go for a 240p. No, we're going to go even smaller. Why not? I should highlight uh, this has been recorded in advance due to the noise that this system generates. Consequently, I am reviewing my own recordings from earlier, so sometimes I am going to forget the things that I've done here on camera. But as we see at this low, 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 low res transition there, we're still able to commit those uh, transcodes there. But there's a little bit of a delay there, less than a second, maybe three quarters of a second as we flick between each one. It's also worth taking note on the right hand side of the screen there, CPU utilization and memory. Now we flick back to the original 720p file type there. We're seeing the CPU memory utilization go down. God, I love this scene from the matrix. Um, and now we're gonna make our way into our 1080p file, the one we always test. A little shop of horrors, an absolute doozy of a movie from the past. 1080p, standard quality there, 1080p file. And we're going to let the movie play. We're going to flick back and forth a little bit just to show you that the file plays absolutely fine. So flick back and forth. And again, this is over the network. If you're wondering how much is being utilized at the top right of the screen, you're able to see the utilization of the network, the bandwidth there. And when we're playing an original file format, the CPU and memory utilization is going to be pretty damn low. Um, it's when we do these transcoding actions where we format to these different file types, such as now when we're flicking to 480p, that we see the CPU have to get a little bit involved. And we have already run these tests already on the Ryzen V1500B processor. We did it on the 1621 and 1821 Plus. So we're quite familiar with the performance of this processor, but nevertheless a number of you might want to know how this specific system handles a lot of the things that we do. So we're seeing... When we've transcoded this file down, um, we are definitely seeing the system struggle a little bit more there. And again, this is largely because of that lack of a GPU embedded processor. If you go with uh, an Intel Celeron, um, an Intel Core, a Pentium, you will be able to see these transitions be a great deal smoother and utilize less overall performance. But even now, as we go to that lowest resolution there, the 160, look at the CPU utilization. Even the memory has started ramping up there and you're going to see that memory utilization ramp up more and more throughout the course of this video as we go through the bigger, bigger file types where the memory has to kind of, you know, support that cache and make sure we've got some data living there. The process is doing all the work, of course, but what we're really interested in seeing now after this 1080p file, which is struggling fantastically here on screen, um, and I think a little bit, I think I quit out here because I felt like it wasn't, that the system basically, the CPU had stalled out on that giant file there. The one we tried to resume playback and then we flicked back to this transition. And I repeated what we did earlier on and gave the system a little bit of notice there. We could see that things did get reverted again. And look at that CPU uh, utilization ramp up once again. It did show that maybe the flicking back and forth did really punish the system a little bit too much. Um, but as we see, in the end, it did get the job done. So from here, I think we can start looking at um, our jellyfish files there. And we're going to go with a nice straightforward file there off the bat. We're going to go straight into the 3 megabits per second 
1080p H.264 file there. And again, nice straightforward playback. And for those that have not watched my Plex test in the past, it's worth noting that H.264 is generally the easiest to playback due to um, additional support being required uh, at a licensing level for HEV and H.265 and again 10-bit HDR there. Very, very important. So those are the ones we're going to have to watch out for. When we're trying to transcode uh, H.264, the transition is going to be largely seamless. It will have to work a bit harder at the higher bit rates, but even now as we move this 1080p to 720p file, we can see there that the buffering there, the darker orange, took place very, very quickly. And throughout the course of these tests, one of the big takeaways that you're going to have to really analyse in this is the difference between the playback in light orange versus the caching, the dark orange. And when we test that same file, 3 meg 1080p, but this time an H.265 10-bit file, HEVC, what you end up with is that, look at that dark orange bar. It's not filled up straight away. That's the caching the system's having to do to convert the HEVC H.265 file into um, something um, more playable for the system. And that's going to happen with every one of those files. And again, I know I'm stating H.265 uh, and HEVC, and they're the same thing, but it's just to cover all the bases for you guys. If we try and convert that file further to a lower 480p, rather than asking the system to automatically do it, we can see the buffering took a little bit of time. We're seeing the spikes there on that CPU to be increasingly more notable. And if we convert automatically, we'll see a much healthier transition from the system. Moreover, if we go for that automatic transition, and this time we play two simultaneous versions of that file at once, what we can do, let it play back there, and run the file in two windows simultaneously, we can see how that affects the system. So we open it up there, have it playing back, and we can see neither one of them has completed buffering, but at least they're playing back at the same time. And if we go back, we've got the conversion taking place to automatic for both. It seems absolutely fine there to run those simultaneous instances of that file. But now, as we go for convert maximum, I think we confuse the system there or the file that it technically completed. CPU there has ramped to the max. And again, non-embedded CPU is always going to be a bit of a hurdle here. But it's where these, when the, with these jellyfish files, this is where we really push these systems. And 10 megabit uh, uh, frame rate, 10 megabits per second, I think is, I would generally consider the line for commercial media before we go into the real specialist 4K stuff. And for those that take their media a lot more seriously. Now, we're going to move now into the next transition. We're going to keep that second window up there. We've got that auto transition there. We're going to keep that second window for later. And now we're going to go to a 10 megabit file. But again, we're going straight into the 10 bit HEVC version. And now take a note of the darker orange line as it buffers ahead of the traditional playback there. And although it's going to win, Buffering is definitely going to outpace playback here. Even if it was a longer file, you can certainly see that we're reaching the peak of what this system can natively handle with the non-embedded Ryzen CPU inside there. If we transcode a little bit there and we make our way into 480p, so again, we're going um, from 10 megabits down to, uh, you know, fractional 1.5 megabit, 480 down from 1080p, Again, the buffering did its job, but you can definitely start to see the struggle there. Now, if we move on, let's have a quick look here and move into a new uh, transition. Let's bring back our other playback tool there. So we've got another window open. So again, we're going to go for a nice transition. And now we're going into a 30 megabits per second H.264 file there. We're going to let them both play back simultaneously. So again, we're dealing with a file type the system knows how to play. The CPU still nonetheless did spike there on the right-hand side of the screen. But because it's H.264, the system was more comfortably able to handle it in its original format and not have to convert it, which would require additional um, software resources to um, get around the lack of GPU embedded resources being present here. 
So again, we've got that second window there. So what we can do now is move that again back into the background. We can make our way into some denser file format uh, straight away. Can scroll through the list. What should we go for this time? And now we're going into the 100 megabit file format there. This is a big old file format. And it's the end of the 1080p um, actions there. So let's go ahead and let that run. Caching starting to struggle there. I think this is probably one of the first instances where if we were using a file that was longer than 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, I think playback would have outpaced this one. I think at the moment caching is winning, but look at that CPU and memory utilization on the right hand side of the screen. It is ramped up completely. Even transcoding this file to you know two megabits per second 720p version of the 1080p file i think we're really going to bottle bottle out here this is where ryzen uh, v1500 quad core processor we've tested previously has kind of hit its limitation um, at this mark and everything after this is kind of a bonus um but for now it is playing back these files but the uh resources being consumed to convert this arguably large uh, one gigabyte 30 second file is showing us that we're kind of hitting the end of the road here so now we're entering 4k or 120 megabits per second file here we're transcoding at 4k um, and of course we are having to convert the hevc 10-bit file to play it back comfortably um, but right now look at the uh, the utilization of resources have a look there at the bottom of the screen. The caching is barely staying ahead at 4K. And I cannot see if this file was longer than 30 seconds, the caching outpacing the playback. I think it will win now. I think it might, if I recall, during the original testing, I think it just about wins. It might not even do that, actually, looking at it now. Um, but no, I think 4K transcoding is very much off the table here. Uh, even transcoding would be largely unnecessary at a file of this scale. But as we can see there, it, it held up. There was clash. It had to wait for the, the buffering to take place so it could resume that playback there. And of course, we're going to continue into the theme of 4K there. We're going to go with our 200 megabits per second file there this is a uhd file but again because this is h.264 it is at least using uh, a native format that the cpu can handle a little bit better there without the um, hevc 10-bit limitations that are required but the caching even then it's not exactly blowing our minds really is it and this is what we saw on previous ryzen testing where the CPU just bottled out. It realized it couldn't do a thing and it quit. That's why the CPU is not exactly rising to the occasion because it couldn't even make the run. So if we switch to the largest file format, if I recall, we did see a slight difference there. If we go to our biggest file, which is our 400 megabits per second, h265 10-bit file so that hev files um, as well so we'll let it try there and the caching does give it a solid good solid good go and you can see the cpu giving it a run up and if i remember correctly it played it for a bit um it definitely gave us better results than what we saw before but looking at the speed of the caching there happening in real time even playback is not going to win against that. It's going to take longer than a second to cache a second. So again, even if it was able to beat it to the finish line, in a file longer than 30 seconds, it's not going to do it. And this file was 1.4 gig for 30 seconds, but look at it, it bottled out. But let's wrap things up there. This has been our standard Plex testing of the new Synology RS1221+. Plus. Um, still a good system, but definitely not 4K on the books. And as a rack mount, more designed for business than pleasure. Let me know what you guys think. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more and stay tuned for our next generation of Plex testing videos coming very soon to the channel. I will see you next time.